thing I get asked about a lot is uh, vocals, uh, vocal production, um, you know, the best effects, the best kind of way to do it. Um, I start every template with a certain approach here, which I think is kind of unique, but it has worked for me over time, so I'll just share it with you. Um, effectively, what I have here is, let's talk about lead vocals. Um, in my lead vocal folder, um, I have all of these channels here, so I can record on any of these when I'm recording lead vocals. Um, you know, eventually I'll end up with three, four, five takes of lead vocals, which I'll comp together. And then they'll come down here, um, you know, and I'll have one track which is for a verse, one's for a pre-chorus, one's for a chorus. Part of the reason for that is you often want different EQ on different parts of the vocal. This is something I think people don't think about that often, um, is that how you treat a vocal when somebody's singing low or in their lower range versus when they're belting a chorus, that will probably require a really different treatment, especially with regards to the EQ. So, I mean, you know, years ago, I would simply have one long track for the whole song, which was lead vocal, and that would have one EQ on it. And effectively, I was trying to solve all of the EQ issues of that entire song with, you know, one EQ treatment. Over time, I found that people can sound radically different in, you know, their lower register and their upper register, especially in their belt voice versus their low voice. So these days, I will have, you know, I'll keep the verse on a tone channel um, and I will actually EQ that straight away. Um, likewise with the chorus. And I may add some extra effects like some dynamic EQ processing, um, which I find especially when the voice is getting a little harsh in a chorus, um, you know, something that will only affect those, um, you know, upper mids uh, when the voice gets especially shrill or harsh is good.